I just wanted to give a bit of an update on my um, four input hot end that I made last time. So I had I had one little issue in that the um, the Capricorn tubing I bought um, didn't grip or the Bowden clips didn't grip it very well. I've had this problem before with it. I remember once before when I drove Capricorn tubing I had the same issue. So what happened is when I went to load the filament um, it basically pushed the rather than the filament going down into the hot end it created a bit of pressure and pulled the Bowden tube back up. You could actually grab hold of the Bowden tube and pull it out of the clip quite easily. Despite that, I did all the right things, you know, pull the little clip thingy up and put a um, put a spacer thing underneath it to hold it. But even at that, you can still pull the tube out quite easily. So yeah, I don't know what it is about Capricorn tubing. I measured the diameter, and it was almost exactly the same size as some generic stuff that I have, which those clips grip fine. Um, so it must just be that it's um, it's more slippery. Um, so anyway, I took a drastic measure and um, took the hot end apart and I actually glued the Bowden tubes into the heat brakes. Um, I got some sort of uh, special super glue for bonding PTFE to metal. Um, so it comes in two parts. Uh, there's like an activator that you coat the PTFE with and then the, um, the glue itself you put on the metal and then put the two together. But a little warning for anybody that tries this, you have about three seconds to whack the tube into the heat brake. Um, after about three seconds it's set. So if it hasn't gone all the way through, you've got a problem. Um, so yeah, basically I, I painted the activator on the, on, the, on the Capricorn tubing and then made sure that it would slide into the heat brake nicely. Um, and then coat the inside of the tube with like a cotton bud or something like that with the actual glue and then very quickly shove it in um, shove it in a little bit further than it needs to be and then you can trim the end off flush with the end of the heat break It's only good for about 80 degrees C, so the bit of Bowden tube that's sort of below the heat break area on the hot side, that probably won't stick well, but the rest of it that's in the cold side, um, that'll never get anything like 80 degrees C, so, so that'll be fine. So that's a bit drastic, um, but it stops the tube coming out. But if ever I need to change the Bowden tube, I'll have to uh, carefully drill it out drill the Capricorn out or um, could end up having to make another heat break or so but I don't really envisage having to change it so that was the first little issue um, sorted that out and it, uh, it yeah that was okay then and then the other issue I had was my um, liquid cooling pump the pump itself packed up so I've had to find a way around that so the uh, the combined sort of pump and reservoir thing that I bought um, couldn't find another one of those and it was similar things uh, upwards of 80 quid upwards um, so I ended up I bought a cheap sort of seven quid um, aquarium type 12 volt pump it's only about six watts um, so that's half an amp so I can run that off a of fan input straight off the diet off the duet um, so I bought a cheap pump and then I I, uh, I took the pump off the reservoir and made an adapter which has just got a spigot on and then um, and then connected the pump up to the existing reservoir so it, it only cost me about 12 quid altogether with all the parts that I had to make so I had to get some more tubing as well um, I've got that sorted now if you do liquid cooling don't use PVC tubing, use silicon tubing. And if you get the stuff that's got two mil wall thickness, um, then it's it's uh, it's a lot better than the than the one mil. It's a bit thicker, um, but it's nice and flexible. And if you buy 
if you've got an 8mm speaker buy a 7mm ID tubing and it will stretch quite nicely and, it, and then it all goes together quite well um, without needing any jubilee clips or anything like that to hold the tubing onto the speaker it just stretches over and gets a really good fit so here's, here's what I had to do with that so that's the existing reservoir with a new adapter I made on it with a uh, pipe that goes down to there which is my cheapy little 12 volt pump so it goes in the pump and then out and then through this flow meter which proved to be a godsend because um, I've got a visual indication that there's flow. Flow meter's also got a little temperature sensor in it and I've got the display there so it gives me a temperature of the water going into the hot end um, and then it comes down here down those pipes right down to the hot end through the hot end and then back up again through those pipes there's isolating taps there um, and there's another set of isolating taps at the top and then it comes back out the top and then out through this radiator which has got a fan behind it blowing cold air through it so it's an air to water cooler if you like and then back up and back up to the reservoir so I got that sorted got the heat brake sorted and then managed to load the filament properly and tune tune do the PID tuning anyway I got all that all done and um, got the first print done which is um, ah, pretty reasonable really for a for a first print I haven't tuned anything on it but that's um it's not bad for a first attempt it'll do so that's actually going to be a, a housing for a um, a video doorbell camera that I'm working on that's gonna um, again doing it on the cheap with a cheap ESP32 cam module and a little and a little speaker in it and stuff so um, yeah so it's looking quite good and quite pleased with it so I shall carry on playing and uh, keep you uh, keep you informed of what happens um, so thanks for watching Thank <laughs> you.